Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic access label. So for more specifically, a dynamic x-axis label. So we have our axis labels. Usually you see, uh, let me, for example, this is a column chart. We have monthly sales data. And usually you just have the, the months. But we can actually add some more interactivity by adding some dynamic uh, chart labeling for the axis down here. Let's say, for example, uh, our sales increased to 150 from January to February. It went from 100 to 150. And you notice now that it's gone up 50% and we have a up marker here. And it's also show here. And let's say that we change, change this one to maybe this one went to 200 after that. And you can notice now we've got 33% and this changed up from down. So we can actually cr incorporate these particular uh, column cell values or these labels as part of our X axis label. Let me show you how that's done. I'm going to go ahead and just copy uh, the month data here. Let me just go ahead and copy that. Control C to copy. Go into a new sheet. And let me just go ahead and select a cell here uh, and control V to paste. Let me go ahead and increase the size here a little bit. And so we've got our data here. And what we need to do is we want to create, if we wanted to create our data here, so let me go ahead and select that and go to insert and insert a column chart from that data. You'll notice that you know we have our plain column chart here. Let me get rid of these grid lines. They're kind of uh, unsightly, a little ugly, but let me go ahead and get rid of them. And let me kind of make this a little bit smaller so we can see this a little better. So normally we have our data here. What, what if we wanted to add additional data at the bottom of the x-axis? What we need to do is create additional columns that would represent that data. So what we can do is we can create the variance here, the variance uh, formula. We can say this month divided by uh, last month uh, minus one. So basically it went up 50% from last month. And I can just copy the formulas down. And you'll notice that uh, it's copied, made it pro uh, And with those cells copied down, let's turn this into a percentage. So I'll just go ahead and click on that and turn it into percentage. So you see uh, January uh, to February. February's data went up 50%. And if we put 200, uh, it's gone up 100%, 100, 200, 100%. And then 0% uh, because there's no changes, right? So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a formula that will indicate uh, if it's positive, it went up. If it's negative, it went down. So that's going to be an if, if then statement. But how do we get those particular uh, markers, this, this triangle that goes up and this triangle that goes down? Well, those are Unicode characters. You can see these are symbols. They're actually, it's not a font. Uh, it's not a font style. It is actually a symbol. So what we need to do, let me go ahead and create a, a, a legend or a table for that symbol for my up and then for my down. So the up and down, let me go ahead and format this a little bit. The up and down are basically symbols, and those are Unicode symbols, as I mentioned before. So let's, we have to enter those. We have to find uh, those. So if we find the fonts that have them, I believe uh, Arial has the, the font for it. And uh, I don't know if Calibre has a font for it, but you'll probably see uh, Arial have the Unicode font. And also, let me look at when I had Calibre. Nope, Calibre didn't. So maybe Times does. I think Times has a Unicode font too. So if I go under here and look at uh, Times, if I scroll down and see if Times has it. So depending on the, the fonts that's loaded in your particular type of uh, Excel, you may or may not have it. Times doesn't have it. So basically, you just want to look for a font style that has Unicode. So let me go back to Arial Unicode. And I'll go click Unicode there. And let me go ahead and insert the symbol. So if I insert the symbol, I'm going to get the area code Unicode. I could have just had gone into symbol and, and looked up here too, but I want to show you where we have it there. So the one that we want to get is under the geometric shapes. So the up is going to be this one, and the down is going to be this one. So if I click on up here, you'll notice that the character code is 25B2 uh, from Unicode. So I, I'll go ahead and insert that, and you, can, you see that it's inserted it there. I want to go ahead and select cell C4. Unfortunately, I have to close out of that. I have to select cell C4 and go under uh, Insert uh, Symbol. And I want to find the Unicode, the Arrow Unicode. And under the ge Geometric Shapes, you can see there's a, there's a bunch of other ones here. But we want Geometric Shapes. And we want the down, the down arrow, the down uh, triangle. And it's going to be this code, 25BC. If I insert that, you can see that it's inserted. Click Close. And now we have our symbols here. So after that, I want to go ahead and create a formula here that would say, if this is above 0, then that's up. If it's below 0, then it's down. So that's going to be with an if statement. So I type equal if, and then uh, open parentheses. If this is greater than 0, then that, if that's true, I want 
up. If not, then if it's false, then if anything anything lower than zero, it's going to be negative, right? So that kind of applies there. So if I click on the close parentheses or close the parentheses, you will have my particular uh, font. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. If I go into home, you can see it's still selected for Calibre. So even though it says Calibre, it doesn't really matter because our Unicode symbol has overridden that. So if I can go ahead and just control, uh, double click this fill handle down here, it will bring it down. And basically the reason why it didn't, I'm showing zeros instead of that is because I forgot to lock uh, the cell reference. So if I press F4, it's going to put the dollar sign in front of the, the C in 3. Uh, click on C4 here, press F4, and it'll do the same. And now it's changed up here. All I need to do is double click it to bring it down. And now you notice that it has appropriately taken uh, that cell reference. And the reason why is because when it copied it down, it didn't move the cell references. It kept the cell references C3, C4. This also refers to C3, C4. So I can go ahead and just use this now and I can include it as part of my label down here. And so to do that, what I need to do is, oh, let me go and format this to make it look a little bit nicer here. So I'll go ahead and click on that and just click on the borders. I, I'll select all borders here and I'll select all that. And what I can do now is I can go into the chart itself and go under layout, whoops, go under design and go to select data. And my horizontal category axis, now it's selected for January, uh, February, May. What I want to do is select it for all of this right here. So I'll go ahead and click edit. And for the range here, it's highlighted here so I can go and select it. So I'm going to go ahead and just select from uh, D2 all the way up to F8, right? And so if I click OK, now you see OK. Now you can see that it's kind of brought them over. Click OK. And now it's brought them over to my chart down here. So if I change something like this, maybe if sales from, 100, from January to February went, didn't really go anywhere, went 100, 100, you'll see that it's 0%. So it shouldn't show down. And the reason why is we probably need to add uh, another if statement here. So we need to adjust our form a little bit to include zero where it wouldn't show any of this. So all we can do is we can change and add another if statement in here. So basically what we're saying is if it's greater than zero, then up. Then if that's false, basically if it's less than zero, then we have another if statement here. If, if this is, if this E3, and go ahead and type E3, is less than zero, right? Now I want to have it point to that, right? Otherwise, then I'm going to have zero. So I'm just, I, or, or just blank. So you notice that even with, with the non-space, you're going to see something like this happen. So maybe I can just put a space in there. Let me go ahead and put a space in there. Press enter. Let me go ahead and double click the fill handle down here again. And now we just have a space. And so that space actually was able to kind of give us a little bit of space between the uh, access labels here. So it kind of gave us a little, a little nice space. So we need to have at least a, an imaginary space here between the quotes. So there's a way to create a pseudo dynamic access label, uh, particularly for the x axis. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.